Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Natalie Schlute. I'm your manifestation coach and today's episode is all about how to use a pendulum to get correct answers. If you don't know what a pendulum is already, it's technically just a string with something heavy hanging off of it. And what it does is it's something that you can use in order to tap into your own subconscious belief system to pull out answers for you. So if you're feeling confused about your intuition, this can help give you some clarity on what your inner guidance is directing you towards. The reason this works is if you've ever heard of the term applied kinesiology. Kinesiology is the study of the human body and how the muscles and the body actually function. So applied kinesiology is applying how the body actually works to something that's gonna give you a reading for yourself. And so when our bodies are in a state of saying something that isn't in alignment with us, something that is a no for us, our physiology and our nervous system actually gets very weak. And when we are strong in our convictions, when we feel really good about something, when something is a definite yes for us, then our nervous system is very strong. It's connected. And we actually get a, a stronger read when it comes to muscle testing. And so this is how the nervous system works because it's connected to our subconscious mind, it's connected to our beliefs. And then that nervous system is giving us a response through our muscles, through our body. And so with applied kinesiology, you can do muscle testing. There's a variety of ways to do that. I've seen lots of people do it. I've been trained by using your arms, whether you put your arm straight out in front of you or out to the side, and you have another person press down on you with a certain amount of force. That's one way to do applied kinesiology on another person. You can ask them a question and then test to see. If their arm breaks, meaning their arm falls down, then the answer is a no. If their arm feels pretty strong, then their answer is a yes. Once again, because the subconscious mind, anything that is a yes for us, we're going to be neurologically connected. We're going to feel solid in that answer. And anything that is a no for us, we're going to feel weak in our nervous system and the muscles are going to give out. It's not a super strong force that you're putting, but a decent, like a very decent level of force that you're putting on another person. You can also test for yourself. You can test a few different ways. I've seen using hooks, like the fingers pulled together and looping them, thumb to pointer finger, and then the other thumb to pointer finger so that they're linked together. And then you say something like, my name is Natalie. And with that, it's going to feel very, very strong. If I say my name is Emily, then as I pull apart, it's gonna feel weak and the fingers are gonna break apart. And so that's a way to do your own testing. I've also seen people that use their middle finger and cross it over their first finger and they press down. So they're using the force of the middle finger to press on the pointer finger and anything that is a yes, give me a strong yes. It's not going to move that pointer finger very much. Give me a no and then it's gonna break. So as you press it down with that point, the middle finger on the pointer finger, it breaks a little bit easier. So those are ways to do applied kinesiology on yourself, on another person, using your physical muscle. But also a pendulum works in the same way. You can train a pendulum to have a similar reaction, give you a yes or a no, based off of what your own subconscious and your nervous system is answering. And it's something that's completely unconscious. You don't have to know the answer. You don't have to think about the answer. You just have to think about the question and the answer will come through your body and into the pendulum. And that's how this whole process works. Most people have seen pendulums in gift shops and in crystal stores and things like that. A lot of pendulums are made of crystal, but they don't have to be. They can literally be made out of anything. You can take a necklace and that can be used as a pendulum. But there are a lot of beautiful crystals. This one here is one that I've had and I've been using it for over a decade. We're best friends. <laughs> I have used this crystal a lot over the years and I absolutely love it. It stays with me all the time. But yeah, you can just take off your necklace and it could be something metal as long as there's something heavy at the bottom and there's some sort of emblem that will give enough weight so that you can use that instead. So you don't have to buy anything fancy. You can even use a string and a paper clip. It can be something as simple as that. It can be made out of wood. It doesn't have to be crystal. It doesn't have to be metal. It just needs to be some sort of string or chain attached to something that has a little bit of weight on it. So you can get creative and make your own. In order to get a correct answer from your pendulum, it's really important that you build a relationship with your pendulum and you build a relationship with trusting yourself in this process. The more you can get into a deep meditative state, 
the better the results will be. Training yourself to be in the alpha brainwave state, which is kind of that sleepy hypnotic state where you're very calm, collected, and your mind is quiet, that's the ideal state where you're going to get the best answers. If you're stressed out, confused, you've got anxiety, that's going to come through the pendulum because the pendulum is reading your body. It's reading your energy. And so if you don't know how to control your own mind and body, then the answers that you are receiving from the pendulum are not going to be very clear either. Understand that pendulums are not reading the future. They are not reading for spirit guides coming through. They're not telling you what's going to happen and what's going on. It's really just what your inner being is telling you and it's based off of your state of being in the moment. So being good with a pendulum means that you have to be learn to be really good with yourself when it comes to clearing your mind, your energy, being present and focused. So the better you train yourself, the better results you will get with your pendulum as well. There are charts that you can find online and print out that give you a framework for how to start training your pendulum. I really love Letter to Robin. I'll make sure that I put the link in the notes below so that you can just click on that. It's a booklet, it's kind of like a mini course that teaches you all about how to use pendulums and there's some great charts in there. Some of the charts are very simple and some of them are very complex. Here's one of them. You can see the top one, how simple that is. That's what we're going to start with in this video. And then there's ones that are more complex, like you can see at the bottom. And then they get even more complex here. I'm going to be turning this into a multi-series of videos so that we're going to start with the basics today. The next video is going to be a little more complex where you're going to go into more detailed programming. And then the third video is going to be more about the do's and don'ts just in general when it comes to programming your pendulum. Be sure that you subscribe, like, and hit that bell so you get notified every time I have new videos for you. And be sure to check out all of the playlists on my YouTube page so that you can get more of this type of information, more training, and all of that fun stuff with me. You can think of the early stages of training your pendulum like learning how to walk. We've got to start with the baby steps so that you're getting the flow and the movement of your pendulum before we go into the deep programming and all of that with the pendulum that I'm going to be teaching you in the next video. So first, as you grab your pendulum, you're going to give yourself maybe an inch, inch and a half to two inches, where I like to put the chain right over my pointer finger and then my hand is holding on to the chain from there. And I just keep it very steady. From here, you'll notice there's going to be a little bit of movement. In the beginning, you're going to actively start to move it very, very gently. So you wanna train it by showing it how to move. And so with this, there's a few things that you want to train it to do. If you print out the chart, you can see that a yes is up and down. If this was laying in front of you, it would be away from your body and towards your body. That is a yes. And then no is side to side. So that's left to right in front of your body. And then there's also this diagonal that says ready for questions. So I personally use that one a lot. I use it every single time so that I know my pendulum is ready for me. It's a way of getting centered. It's a way of getting connected and being ready to actually use the pendulum. So first, I just want you to take your pendulum, you can hover it over the chart, or you can just hover it in front of you. You don't need the chart, but the chart is kind of fun and nice to use. First, I just want you to get it moving forward and back as if it's saying yes. Away from your body and towards your body. Give it just a little nudge. And in your mind, say yes. 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 And then have it shift to no. Say no, give it a little shift, give it a tiny little push, and say no in your mind over and over and over again. It's just allowing you to connect to your pendulum. You're teaching it what yes means and what no means and how that feels. And then you can teach it ready for questions. So if it's in front of your body, ready for questions is going to be up into the right and back into the left. So once again, you can give it a little nudge and allow it to move on that diagonal and tell it, ready for questions, ready for questions. And you can do this a few different times. Just start to play with it and train it, give it a little bit of movement, and then notice if you can get to the point where all you have to do is think yes. You're not even giving it a nudge. 
but it's just doing it on its own. I didn't actively do anything. I was just thinking yes, and now it's doing it on its own. So this is how we start to train it. Another thing you can train it to do is to move in a clockwise and counterclockwise motion. So once again, you can actively move it as a clockwise. And you can also actively move it and train it to go counterclockwise. Now I find that every pendulum is a little different. Sometimes they have their own personality. And so the funny thing about my pendulum is there are two ways that it tells me yes. Sometimes it will actually move in a clockwise direction, circle, and for me that's a yes. Other times if it's a serious, very intense yes, oh there it goes. <laughs> I was just starting to talk about a serious yes and it went straight away from my body and towards my body. So for me when it's a definite yes, like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, a definite yes, it's to away and towards my body. And if it's just a general yes, it's going to be a circular clockwise. When it's thinking, when I'm not quite sure or I'm confused, maybe I need more information or perhaps my subconscious is collecting information from the ethers, mine actually turns in a counterclockwise direction. And so this is just the personality of my particular pendulum and what my particular pendulum likes to do. You might find that as you start connecting with your pendulum that it wants to do something different than you want to train it to do. And that's okay. Let it do what it wants to do. Meaning for you, a yes might be clockwise. And then when you ask it no, it goes counterclockwise. It might not, not like the straight forward and back or the side to side. It may give you something different, but pay attention to what's coming through. And you can ask, ask it like it's your friend, like, hey, what is a yes for you? And then it'll start moving and it'll tell you what a yes is. Apparently a yes, there we go, is a counterclockwise for me. So you can ask what it is and just see if it answers you. What is a yes for you, little pendulum? What is a no for you? What is you thinking, right? My counterclockwise is when it's thinking. And so this is a way to just play and kind of get to know your pendulum, but also train it at the same time and find out what it really wants and how it wants to work with you. The other thing you can train it to do is you can train it to start yes and no, straight up and down. And then you can ask it to move in a clockwise direction while maintaining that straight line. Oop, there it goes. So now it's shifted from a yes to a no. Shift back to yes, continuing in that clockwise direction. There it goes. I'm not even trying to do this. I'm just telling it to do it. And now go in a clockwise direction. Go from yes to no in a clockwise direction. There we go. And then go from no to yes in a counterclockwise direction. There. So that's another way to train it. Training it in these different movements, straight forward and back, side to side, on the diagonal, train it to go in a circle, a circle in the other direction, start straight and then work its way sideways and then vice versa. These are all ways that you can start to play with and train it so that it starts to get used to you and you start to build that connection with your pendulum. Once you've trained it in all these different directions, you've asked it, show me a yes, show me a no, you're starting to learn what the pendulum wants, then you can actually begin to ask some questions. And I recommend starting with some questions that you know the answer to. So a couple of very simple ones you can do is say a statement that is true to you and then a statement that is false to you. Very clearly true, very clearly false and see what comes up. So when I say my name is Natalie, what is the pendulum going to do? A little long. Here we go. <laughs> my name is Natalie. It's going to give me a definite yes. If I say my name is Mary, going to give me a definite no. My favorite color is yellow. It's going to say no. My favorite color is blue. Now it's circling. Ooh, really big circle. You'll find <laughs> that when something is a very strong yes or a very strong no, the swing radius is going to get a lot bigger. Apparently I really like the color blue. It is my favorite color. It's always been the, my favorite color in my life. This is probably one of the biggest yeses I think I've ever seen my pendulum do. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good, calm down. Um, and then you can ask something like, 
what the day of the week is. Today is Sunday. I get a no. The day is Friday, the day that I'm recording this. It may take a moment, but eventually it'll get there. Yes, <laughs> there's a yes. So these are very simple ways that you can start asking questions. You can ask a question, is my name this, is my name that? You can say it as a statement, a very solid statement, yes, a solid statement, no, and just begin to build that relationship with your pendulum. My next two videos are gonna be going a lot deeper into how to program your pendulum. Now that you know the basics, you can move on to the advanced steps. And then also be sure to check out all the do's and don'ts when it comes to programming your pendulum. It's gonna be really important because there are things that can get you confused or kind of wonky when it comes to using your pendulum and you wanna make sure that you're getting the correct answers. If you enjoy things like learning how to use your intuition, using your pendulum for intuition and expanding all of your natural intuitive abilities, be sure to check out my free manifestation and metaphysical download library. It's a place on my website where you can get access to all of the freebies that I have ever created in one place. And you can just download everything at once. It's really awesome, really easy. I have the link in the show notes below. If you have any questions about how to use your pendulum, any clarification that you need, be sure to put it in the comments below so that I can answer all of your questions. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and hit that bell so you get notified every time I have new episodes for you. And be sure to check out all of my playlists. I have more videos coming up when it comes to pendulum work, intuition, manifestation, and all of that good stuff. So check out those videos here.